channel, I am Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. In today's tutorial, we are tackling a fun new pattern of mine. Going along with my mouse ears that we saw in the last videos, we now have a wall hanging mouse ear holder. Whether you have your own handmade DIY crochet mouse ears, or you have ears that you have cherished from the parks that you've held on to for years, this holder is for you. It keeps things off your floor, on the wall, and displayed nicely for all your friends and family to see and ask you, where did you get that? And you can tell them, uh, I made it. So I hope you're excited. Um, before we get into the materials and what you need to get into this project, I do need to let you know this is in easy to intermediate in that range level pattern. We do have some seaming. We also have crocheting in the round. We have a couple of techniques that you might not be used to. So if you are a beginner beginner, this might be a lot for you. If you're an experienced beginner and you're ready to tackle it with some visuals and some broken down things in this video, then this is the pattern for you. If you're intermediate, you're already ready to go. So without further ado, let us get into what we need to get started for this project. There's a couple of different materials besides yarn that you should be looking for in your stash or going to the store for. So I'm going to hand you over to the voiceover and let's get started making this beautiful mouse ear holder. Diving right into what we will be needing for this project, we are of course going to start with the hero of the pattern, which is our main color yarn or MC for short, MC yarn. You'll need about 85 yards for the standard three tabbed version of this ear organizer. And today I chose Cotton at Lynn from Yarn B. I got this at Hobby Lobby in the color Rouge. Very pretty color. It's got a little bit of fiber mixed into it. Uh, that's a little like super rustic. I'll always check the yarn label to make sure that you are working with a category four worsted weight yarn. The second yarn that we will be needing to use uh, is our complementary color, or CC yarn for short. You'll need 26 yards, again, of a 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. I chose I Love This Cotton for my second color in the colorway Sun Setting. I really do love this colorway. It's super pretty. Again, check that yarn label. Make sure it matches the other one if you're choosing two different brands, of course. We'll be doing a little bit of light sewing with a sewing needle and thread for those snap buttons um, that I will be showing you in a second here. We will also, of course, need a crochet hook. So grab your size seven or 4.5 millimeter hook for that. Then a mystery item that not normally you would see in a pattern is a four inch metal ring. Um, this is four inches in diameter. That will come in handy to keep this structure stable. We will need stitch markers. Um, those are definitely going to be coming in handy later. We will absolutely be needing our little snap buttons. Now you can totally use Velcro for this project in place of snap buttons, but I prefer snap buttons. I think they're cleaner and easier to work with. Velcro kind of ruins yarn, in my opinion. <laughs> And we will obviously need a tapestry needle. I do weave in, in my ends as I go. You were warned in the last video, you were warned in this video. Last but not least, get you a pair of scissors because we should not be using our teeth to cut yarn. Don't ruin your pretty teeth. <laughs> and uh, just as a disclaimer, this is the video tutorial once again for the three tabbed ear organizer. If you're making a four, five, or six, or seven tabbed ear organizer, you will be needing extra yarn of each type for that. I put that up on the screen. Go ahead and screenshot that for your use later. Now, let's get started. Okay, before we dive into our first set of stitches for this pattern, I do want to go over the anatomy of the Ever After Ear Organizer. So this is a graphic I have in the pattern to kind of help you visually get to know what you're making before you actually go and make it. Um, the first chapter one that we will be working on is the top of the ear organizer. That is comprised of one larger circle, which is represented by letter B, and two smaller seamed circles, which are represented by letter A. Then the chapter two of this pattern will be comprised of two components. One is letter C. That is the main strip. That's basically the spine of the organizer that all the tabs hang on, which is represented by letter D. And the 
this ear organizer, you can make it kind of pretty much whatever length you'd like. For the length purposes of this pattern, I am limiting it to three for this tutorial, but you can totally add more and I'll show you how to do that later. But yes, these are the first two chapters represented and then chapter three is the assembly of everything all together. So now that we have that covered, let's dive right in to chapter one and get to making. And diving right in, let's get into chapter one where we work on the top portion of our Ever After Organizer. I realize this is the first time you're hearing the actual name of the pattern. It took me until filming this video in full to actually come up with a name for it. So there you have it, the Ever After Organizer. To begin round one, we are going to create a magic ring in any style that is easiest for you and then you are going to go ahead and chain one. Then into our magic ring, we are going to single crochet eight. Once you single crochet eight, all you have to do is pull that original tail of your magic ring tightly to close the circle and do not join to the first stitch made for this round one. You should have eight stitches at the end of this round. For round two and until further notice, we will be working continuously in the round. Um, for round two in each stitch, we will be working an increased stitch. Um, but after you make that first stitch of round two, go ahead and grab a stitch marker and mark that off so you don't lose your place. And just as a quick reminder for those that are new to increasing, all you need to do is just make two single crochet stitches into the same stitch all the way around. So that should double your stitch count from the previous round, giving you a total of 16 stitches for round two. We're going to continue on with a standard circle increase, which will have you increase in the second stitch of the increase of the previous round. So this will mean that you will work a single crochet and then a single crochet increase. Single crochet, and then a single crochet increase. All the way around, which will give you eight new stitches to your stitch count giving you a total of 24 stitches for round three. For round four, once again, after making that first stitch for round four, we will replace that stitch marker in that new round stitch. And our repeat for this round will be once again, adding an increase into just the second stitch from the previous rows increase. So that means we will work single crochet two and then increase into the next stitch. Single crochet two and then increase into the next stitch. Do this all the way around until you have a total of 32 stitches for round four. So I hope you can guess it by now that this is pretty much what happens in a standard growing circle that is worked continuously, or if you just join at the end of every row, it's the same. You're working single crochet three for round five, 
and then increase into the next stitch. That is our repeat all the way around. Excuse my camera, not focusing. Come on camera. Don't you just love when your cameras get ADD? <laughs> all right, so then we are working single crochet three and increase and doing that all the way around, gathering another eight stitches to your stitch count, making your total stitch count for round five, 40 stitches. And then for round six, this is a little bit different from the other rounds. You will still continuously move up that stitch marker with the first stitch of every round. For this round, your repeat will be single crochet four and then increase into the next stitch. Single crochet four, increase into the next stitch. Repeat this all the way around for a total of 48 stitches for round six. And at the end of this round, you're going to join to the first stitch made and chain one. And we'll see why in just a little bit. Right, and I'm coming up on the end of round six here. I will finish that last increased stitch from the repeat of round six. I'm gonna remove that stitch marker, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of round six, and then go ahead and chain one. Now round seven, it's gonna be the same type of increasing style as before, where you do an increase into the second stitch of the increase of the previous round. But for this round, we're doing half double crochet instead of single crochet. So when you get to doing your repeat here, you're doing half double crochet five, and then your increase will literally just have you do two half double crochets into the next stitch. So half double crochet five, and then half double crochet increase into the next stitch and you're gonna work this all the way around, giving you another eight uh, new stitches to add to your stitch count. You will have 56 stitches for round seven's total stitch count. Join to the first stitch made like in the last round, but instead of chaining one, we're going to trim off that working yarn. We won't be needing it anymore. We are now going to graduate to using our complementary color yarn for this last round of the larger circle here. So all you have to do to change color is just pull a loop of that through the loop on your hook and then tighten your main color yarn just to keep that kind of anchored down. Now to begin round eight, we are going to chain one. And this is where we're gonna slow down a little bit and talk about how we're now going to incorporate that fun mystery item uh, that we saw in the list of materials. This round eight will be worked into the third loops of the previous round. So we have on the top of our stitches here the V's, we have the front and back loop, and then we have a horizontal bar on the back of our work called the third loop. So that is what we'll be working into. I'll do the first stitches pretty, uh, pretty slowly here so that you can kind of catch on. If you need to rewind this and play at a slower speed, I totally get it. Um, finding that first one can be a little tricky, so I actually kind of insert my hook from back to front and then kind of hook it back around the back to catch that half or the, excuse me, that uh, horizontal bar. Once I have that kind of already on my hook, I go ahead and take the metal ring and I put it directly onto my hook, just like that. You don't have to be polite about it. <laughs> and then you're going to yarn over and gently pull that, catching the ring in the process underneath a single crochet stitch. Let me repeat that again slowly for you. Insert your hook into the next third loop from the previous round, yarn over and pull that yarn through underneath the metal ring and through the loop on your, 
on your hook and then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook to complete a single crochet. So really what we're doing is, is we're working single crochets into the third loop only of each stitch around and then you are going to incorporate the metal ring. So anytime you go into that third loop, you'll also make sure that your hook stays underneath the metal ring. Then you can grab some yarn and pull it through and yarn over and pull through two loops. Pretty simple. Like I said, press pause, rewind this, watch it at a slower speed if necessary. But once you do at least three or four, everything starts to kind of fall into line. It's just those first couple stitches can be a little wonky. So I know I said you're going to single crochet all the way around uh, for this last round, round eight. However, you will actually be doing a increase an increase into the last stitch of the previous round. So working single crochet all the way around, like I said, when you get to the very last stitch to work into, you will actually work two single crochets into the last stitch, not one. And there's a reason for this. Um, it was just like a weird design thing I figured out <laughs> early on, but work that around. Here we are, we're coming up to the very last stitch. Like I said earlier, you're going to work a single crochet and then an increase. Look at that. Perfect, so now we have an odd number. We're going to, from here, join to the top of the first stitch made, and then you're going to go ahead and chain 10. And then slip stitch back into the top of that same stitch as joining, which is the first stitch from the previous round, or from that round. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. We have actually just created a loop now that will be what our organizer will hang on. So pull a little bit of yarn out there to fasten off and then just weave that tail into the wrong side of your work. And then we are also going to tighten knot and weave in the original tail from the main color yarn into our work as well. You're gonna see me kind of like pull that tightly and closed here. And I'm just gonna do a couple knots to secure it in place. I always do, I always double knot this. I know I probably don't have to, but I'm just a little bit OCD like that. <laughs> so you're going to double knot that and then take your tapestry needle and weave those ends in. You could technically do this later, but I'm telling you, because of the nature of this pattern, you're, you are doing some seaming, you are doing some sewing of pieces together. It's just better to have these out of your way and not bothering your eyes. All right, then we are now going to make some smaller circles. We're gonna make a total of four of these. Um, to begin at least one of these, we are going to create a magic ring, like in the larger circle, and then chain one. And then into the magic ring, you're going to work six single crochet stitches. And after six are completed, then you will pull the tail, the original tail of the magic ring, and then tighten that up and once again, we will also be working continuously into the round, so do not join to the end of this round. For round two of the smaller circle, we are going to work an increase into each stitch around, which will give you six new stitches to add to your stitch count. Round two, you will have a total of 12 stitches all the way around. True to fashion, in a normal circular increase for round three, we will be working single crochet and then increase into the next stitch. Single crochet and then increase into the next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around, gaining six new stitches for your stitch count, and that will leave you with 18 stitches for your total stitch count for round three. round four continuing on with our growing of our circle we will work single crochet two and then increase into the next stitch single crochet two and then increase into the next stitch all the way around until we have a total of 24 stitches which is six more than our last round 
And at the end of this round, you are going to join to the first stitch made and chain one. Don't forget to join at the end and chain one. And then for round five, just before that, we will make sure that we join to that first stitch made of round four and then chain one. You are then going to continually grow your circle like we did before, but you will be using half double crochets as your base stitch instead of single crochet. So work half double crochet three and then increase into the next stitch or two half double crochet into the next stitch. That's half double crochet three and then half double crochet increase into the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around. For round five, you should have a total stitch count of 30 stitches, which is six more than the previous round. Join to the first stitch made like in the last round, and then when you go to fasten off, for this smaller circle, you will be fastening off with an eight inch long tail, and that we will be using later for sewing in chapter three for the assembly of the organizer parts. <laughs> You're assembling the organizer parts together with our sewing tails. Alrighty, before moving on to the bottom of this organizer, the last parts of the top will be, we will be seaming the small circles together. They are going to be seamed in obviously groups of two here. And we're going to once again be working into the third loops of the last round of the smaller circles, round five. Um, this will be a little wonky just to get started. Again, if you're not used to doing uh, seaming with crochet stitches but I promise you um, I will go nice and slow for you to begin all you need to do is grab two of those circles and make sure that the wrong sides are facing each other the right sides of the pieces are facing out go ahead and insert your hook into the stitches to the left of those uh, ending fasten off points and go ahead and have both of those on your hook and then you're going to grab your complementary color yarn and just create a quick slip knot with your yarn. Um, and I would also advise that you work a slip knot that has an eight inch long tail and that will be used again later for seaming. Um, and then once you have the slip knot started, just go ahead and put that on your hook. There we go, nice and snug, here we go. You are now going to use that complementary color yarn. You're gonna join it to those third loops and chain one. And this might be a little fiddly, um, but I will hopefully be able to show you as clearly as possible. And insert into that same place as joining the new yarn and work a single crochet stitch through those matched third loops of both of the circles. So insert your hook into the next third loop of the front piece, insert your hook into the next third loop of the back piece, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, and that will create a seeming single crochet stitch. And you're going to work like that all the way around until you have five stitches left from each circle, and you will not work into those last five stitches. And you'll see why later on in the assembly of the final assembly of the organizer. But yes, continue to pause, rewind, play it back in a slower speed. This part can be a little heady for those that aren't used to seam work. Um, a lot of people use this third loop only joining method for seaming granny squares together, um, but I chose to do this for flat pieces for this. And there it is, all finished. We do have a right side and a wrong side with this. The right side of your seamed circle will actually be the side where 
the right sides of the seaming stitches are facing you. All right, and um, make sure you fasten off that last uh, seaming stitch with an eight inch long tail and set that aside for later, but that will kind of set itself right at the top, just like a mouse ear, as you can see here, which will mimic our mouse ears that we're holding on our ear organizer. So fun. All right, so once you've done that with one, set of ears or set of circles do that with the other two same steps and i'll see you in the next part so a little bit of a disclaimer i do not do all of this next section in the written pattern itself so if you're just watching the video and you haven't bought the written pattern um, this is actually kind of exclusive to this YouTube audience here I know that this piece has some sewing to do and it can be a little confusing so what I'm doing here is I'm marking off the starting and stopping points of all of our sewing stitches in the larger circle here and that will really help us later on so the first sets of stitches I'm marking off as some stitch markers are the 53rd and the 47th stitch and those are going to be kind of placed um, seven stitches around and then five stitches from that center point at the top um, you're going to do the same asymmetric, uh, excuse me, you're going to do the same symmetrically to the other side of the top of the uh, larger circle here, marking off the fifth and the eleventh stitch of round eight of the larger circle. And as you can see, when I go to take my seamed smaller circles and kind of just place them, uh, this is basically going to give us our mouse ear shape. That will mimic the mouse ears that will be on the ear organizer. Um, but I did this because with, you see we got a lot of threads and yarn tails to uh, use for sewing later. This will just help us keep sane of knowing where to start and where to stop all of our sewing stitches because sometimes my eyes can go cross when I do this. Alrighty and then the next things that we are going to mark off, uh, we are not marking off of round eight, we are going to mark the posts of round seven, which is that half double crochet round that we had there, um, where the tops of the stitches are pushed forward. So um, these will be marked because these will be the starting and stopping points for sewing on the bottom of the ear organizer to the top of the ear organizer. So you see me painstakingly count, and I'm using actually the tops of the stitches that are pushed forward to find them. Uh, I'm finding the 27th and 31st stitches of the top larger circle here and take your time counting these again this isn't super super necessary if you just want to eyeball this that's also another option it's your ear organizer whatever you want to do i just like symmetry and i like things to hang down straight when i go to put it on my wall because it would drive me nuts to know that uh oh here i found it <laughs> okay so here is the 27th stitch I'm actually taking my stitch marker and I am going right around the post I'm not marking the actual top of the stitch it's because the seaming stitches for that portion of the assembly will be seaming into the posts we're not going into the top of the stitch you'll see this explained uh, a little bit in more detail later um, you can see me kind of struggling to uh, I have a I probably picked the wrong stitch marker for this particular um, marking off point here, but I'm able to visibly see that from the back. So yay, love that journey. Um, and then I'm going to count from there, four stitches over, finding the 31st stitch and taking a stitch marker and marking the post of that. Um, there we go, one, two, three, four, boom 31st stitch i really gotta dig that i gotta get some better stitch markers for stuff like this those are more for like knitting projects okay cool so here we go i've marked off those stitches now your larger circle looks kind of crazy it looks like a some kind of a weird uh dream catcher or something um you're seeing me here trying to find other stitch markers to use because I wasn't satisfied with that choice. <laughs> but yes, again, this is not something I have in the written pattern. I only mark off 
those 27th and 31st stitches. I don't mark off the other places, but I, in the future when I will be making more of these organizers, I will be marking off those because it just helps your brain. It's one last thing to really think about and I'm more of a visual person, so this helps me and I hope it helps you. And it has been so long since I've actually made one of these, so I realize what I'm doing here. One last area that I am marking off here, I am counting and finding the 26th stitch of round eight and I'm marking that off with another stitch marker and then I'm marking off the 32nd stitch of round eight of the larger circle and I'm marking that off and that is going to be for seaming down the border edge of the main strip that we will be making in the next chapter chapter two the bottom um, Again, I'm such a visual person. Sorry if this looks wild and crazy, <laughs> but I'm also not sorry because I know this will help someone that is just as cuckoo as I am. Welcome to chapter two of this pattern. We are now working on the bottom portion of our ear organizer. Here we go. I'm creating a slip knot to start. And um, that we are starting with that main color yarn again. And for row one, we are working a foundation chain of chain six. Now, in the very first row of this pattern, and this will be the same for the second section of this chapter, the tabs, we will be working into the back bumps of the foundation chain. So if you have seen the Ever After tutorial for the mouse ears, crochet mouse ears, I do the same technique for the bow foundation. Uh, so what you're doing is you're just working into the spine of the chain which is not the front or back loops of the chain, it's the spine. And it's basically just on the opposite side of the Vs of the chain. And take your time. This isn't 100% necessary, I just like this method. I think it looks cleaner, and I think it's visually just easier on the eyes. But yeah, so you're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and then into each chain across chain one, and turn for row one, a total of five stitches. For rows two through five, it is a single row repeat of just working single crochet across, then chain one and turn. And these are normal single crochets across, no front loop, back loop, back bar, none of that nonsense. Uh, but the next row, row six, will be where we do a little bit of extra fun. So hold on to your crochet pants. I zoomed in a little bit here for you. Round six, all stitches will be worked into the back bars of the previous row's stitches. For a single crochet stitch, that is that tiny little horizontal bar on the back of the stitch. It kind of looks like a dotted line when they're all next to each other. To get this first one, you're kind of going to see me um, use the hook part of my hook, not the top of my hook, and I'm going to kind of get up underneath it and then kind of rotate my hook to get onto my hook before I begin the single crochet. So here we go. Yarn over and pull through on the loop on your hook and then yarn over and pull through two. And then you can do the same method um, for all the way across. Clover and more hooks are less hooky than other hooks. I mean, is that even something you can say? Less hooky? Um, not like the Susan Bates style or like the Furls crochet hooks. Those would be a lot better at doing this. Um, and because we do a hook size down than recommended on the yarn label for this pattern, this can get a little ski wonky, but I promise you it is feasible and this is the best method I have found to do so. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just making single crochets all the way across. Don't work into the chain, the turning chain from the previous row. Make sure you still only have five stitches at the end of row, two, uh, row six and turn your work. And then you can see the tops of those stitches nicely pull forward, kind of similar to working to the third loops of half double crochet stitches. 
and then we will work a single row repeat for rows 7 through 33, single crochet across, chain one, and turn, just like we did with rows two through five. Um, and then just to give you a little read ahead moment here, because really this is just super, super uh, easy to memorize this part of the pattern. If you are making an organizer that has more than three mouse ear tabs, or, and the tabs are what hold the mouse ears in place. So if like say you wanna display five ears instead of three pairs of ears, or six pairs of ears instead of three pairs of ears, you will work that repeat of rows six through 33 as many times as necessary. Uh, for the purpose of the length of this pattern and this video tutorial, I am only working a three tabbed organizer. So I only need to repeat rows six through 33 once more after uh, this row 33 here. Um, and that will bring me to 81 total rows. And at the end, you'll see how that works up um, because we do have a little bit of length before that you know before we change and border this here um, so here we are I finished up until row 33 I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to begin my next uh, that row repeat that I just mentioned here so I am repeating row 6 through 33 row 6 is that back bar single crochet row and here you can see me kind of do it slowly again if you needed that reminder so yeah, like I said, for additional tabs, which are what holds the mouse ears in place onto the organizer, you will repeat rows six through 33 as many times as needed. Um, if you've bought the pattern, I did provide a chart to kind of help you remember and keep track of the row count um, that you will be needing to adjust if you do make up a longer length of an organizer. And um, if you did not get the pattern and you're, you're just curious about that, um, just send me a message on social media like Instagram or send me an email. I do leave my email down below uh, if you were needing some of that information. I'm that's I'm more than happy to provide that for you. Um, alternating patterns seems easy at first, but then when you go to think about it, it can be kind of like <laughs> a little kerfuffle in your mind. So, all right, I'm zooming out so we can see the proper length here. And everywhere we see those um, tops of the stitches brought forward, that is where we add a tab that will be what holds the mouse ears in place. All right, so um, just for the purpose of this pattern, I'm only repeating this whole six through 33 row repeat once through. Um, and yeah, here we go. Let's fast forward into the next section here. All right, so I have my, my length here. I got one, two, three row sixes that are repeat repeated. Um, I'm going to repeat row six one more time at the end of for row 62 here and then I am going to go ahead and work a single row repeat of single crochet across chain one and turn for rows 63 through 81. So the three tabbed holder will have 81 rows. At the end of the working of working the last stitch of row 81 do not chain one and turn you will be actually changing your yarn color to the complementary color and join that new complementary color tail on with an eight inch long tail that will be once again used for sewing later as you can tell we've sewn we're going to be sewing a lot later <laughs> um, and then also when you trim away the working main color yarn just make sure you leave an eight inch long tail of the main color yarn for sewing later as well all right so you're going to see me here drop the working main color yarn wrapping my complementary color yarn pulling through the last two loops on my hook with the new yarn, just like so, and then tightening that main color yarn tail, and I'm going to uh, work a chain one. And now we're going to begin this border of the main strip. The main strip border is pretty simple. All we're doing is we're just working into the raw edges of the main strip on either side of it. And we're also working across the bottom edge as well. 
and you'll see this easily displayed here. Um, if you ever need to pause and screenshot the little instructions I have on the side and save them for later, if you're kind of doing this project in pieces, you know, feel free to do so. I will not take offense to it. Um, just don't try to resell it as your own pattern because that is stealing. Um, but here we go. So we're working into the raw edges here. Do whatever makes sense to you. For me, my first raw edge is right into the last same, uh, that last stitch has worked. Um, I kind of go with like the biggest dents in the side of the of the raw edges, and that's where I put my hook. <laughs> so insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook, and that is our single crochet border stitch. And you are going to just basically um, from here, I kind of just tie these two tails together, um, just couple times so they don't unravel because sometimes that really bothers me when I'm working across raw edges and they're just kerfuffling and unraveling and then my work has even harder to see so um, sometimes I work into that turning chain that you see there I'm gonna zoom in here for you but uh, other times I work into the big hole beneath the other one and that is not what I did this time. I just worked into the turning chain. So here you go. And all I would say is if you're confused about working into the raw edges of pieces, um, this is a great way to do borders, but don't make it a science. Just work into what seems to be obvious. Try to keep them as even as possible and keep working into the similar places all the way across. Um, and it'll make sense over time. If you're new to crochet and this is a bit of a weird concept, just do what feels right. <laughs> Honestly, people say that it matters. I think that this is your project and you do what makes your crojo stay hot and alive for this project, all right? So you're gonna work that all the way across and have a total of 80 single crochet stitches. You will not work into that last raw edge because that will be step two of the main strip border. We will rot rotate our work before going into that. But you can see those are the unworked uh, loops of the foundation chain. Um, and those will be very important later. But um, until then, work all the way across and I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, here we go. We are working into step two of the main strip border. We are now working across the unworked loops of the foundation chain, which is what we were given when we worked into the back bump of the foundation chain. So now these look like the tops of stitches on the bottom of our work. We are going to work uh, what looks like to be increases into most of these loops, but it's not. So the first set of unworked loops, we're working a single crochet and then half double crochet into that first set of unworked loops. And into the next set of unworked loops, which is basically like the next stitch, we are working a half double crochet stitch. And then a double crochet stitch. So the stitches are gradually growing in height size. Then the next set of unworked loops, or the next stitch, we are going to work a double crochet. And into the next set of unworked loops, we will work a double crochet and a half double crochet. Now we're going down in stitch size, or stitch height. And then into the last set of unworked loops, um, don't count those out, a little harder to tell because it's a tighter space. We're working half double crochet and then single crochet. And then that concludes the bottom edge border for step two. For step three, very simple, just like in step one, we're working across the right side of the raw edges of the main strip, working 80 stitches. And then when you get to the end here, you are going to uh, fasten off with an eight inch long tail, and then we will set this piece aside for later. But here we go, it's all worked up. Just leg like magic, I wish it was that fast in real life. And there we go. Um, if you are doing extra tabs, this will, the, your stitch count will increase by 28 stitches for each extra tab length added. Um, that is put in the pattern. Again, if you have questions about that, DM me below into the comments or send me a message in my email or Instagram. All right, we're gonna set this aside and get ready for the next bit of chapter two. 
All right, we will now be working up the tabs that will connect to our ear organizer, and these are what hold the mouse ears in place. They hug them to the ear strip, or the main strip, excuse me. I keep calling it the ear strip because there's an ear strip in the Ever After pattern, <laughs> so I'm used to that language. But anyway, here we go. We are working up chain six with our main color yarn again, and then just like in the main strip, we are going to work into the back bumps of the foundation chain, which is the spine of the foundation chain. Um, I'm not gonna slow it down as much for this part, but you will see me kind of work it up in my own time. And this will again give us that bottom edge to work into, like you saw um, just recently in the main strip border. And once you reach all the way across with your single crochet stitches, you will chain one and turn your work. All right, and then for rows two through 16, we have that single row repeat like we did before in the main strip. Um, but there is no back bar working at all. We are just going to do a single row repeat until we have a total of 16 rows for these tabs. At the end of working the last stitch of row 16, we will be changing that yarn color to the complementary color yarn. So um, here you see me at the end here. I am working into that last stitch like I'm going to normally work into it. Here we go. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I will pull through both loops on my hook with the new yarn color. Here we go. Much easier to see now that we have the purple variegated part of the yarn. And then make sure you uh, join that with an eight inch long tail that will help for later. Again, we will use that for sewing later. And then you're going to chain one to kind of lock that in. Um, I know, and I hope that you've seen, I do not crochet over these tails for a reason because we need those for sewing later. So don't sew over the tails. That's kind of why I tied them together with the main strip. It just made it easier for me to remember not to crochet over them. And then uh, for step one of this tab border, we are going to rotate our piece a little bit here, have access to that left side of the tab, like in the main strip. And we are going to work across the edge of the left side of the tab. Work 15 single crochet stitches evenly across, just like we did with the main strip, but not as long because now we have a little tab and it's so much cuter to work with, if I do say so myself. Right, and here we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed that sped up version here. We are now for step two, similar to the main strip. We're doing the same exact thing as step two of the main strip border for the tab border for step two. So we will be working single crochet, half double crochet into the first set of unworked loops. Make sure you grab some more yarn like I do. Uh, then you're going to work half double crochet double crochet into the next set of unworked loops. Double crochet into the next set of unworked loops. Double crochet, half double crochet into the next set of unworked loops. and then into the last set of unworked loops, work half double crochet and single crochet. And that will give you a total of nine stitches across the bottom edge of the tab. And then, yep, you guessed it, we're just working single crochet stitches all the way across the last edge of the, main, of the tab here, or the right side of the tab, work 15, single crochet stitches across, and there we have it. Fasten off with an eight inch long tail. I'm gonna show you, I made 
a good amount here. I've made three of them total. So make sure you have your extra tabs finished. And now let's get into chapter three, the last chapter. We're getting there, we're getting there. So as you can see, we got tons of pieces to work here. We got our smaller seamed circles, our larger circle. We got our main strip, we got our tabs. But to start off simply, um, we are going to work on attaching the tabs to the main strip first because that is a great way to introduce our sewing techniques for this pattern. All right, so diving right in, we're going to take a tab and line up the top edge of it with the unworked tops of the stitches from row five that were brought forward in the main strip. It doesn't matter which one you start with, um, but go ahead and thread a tapestry needle with a main color yarn tail from the tab. All right, and if you line these up correctly, um, you should have the points or the bottom edges, excuse me, of the tab and the main strip facing away from each other. So see how that is? And basically we're positioning that so it's gonna be able to fold up and over a mouse ear and hold it in place. So there we go. We are gonna pull this up to the camera so a little bit closer so you can see. And here we go, they are lined up pretty easily there. We have five tops of stitches there and then five tops of stitches there. The first sewing stitch that we will do will go right into from top to bottom the first set of unworked loops from the tops of the stitches of that first row six repeat that we did. And then we're going to go down to up through the tops of the stitches of that same matched up set of loops. All right, then we're going down and through the next set on the main strip and then up and through the next set on the tab. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. Do that three more times total. Up to down, down to up, up to down, down to up, all the way across. Notice I'm not pulling tightly when I do this. I just wanna get the rhythm of it. Uh, when I finish and I don't have any more tops of stitches to go into, I will be pulling my tail tight. And um, I feel bad, I don't think I made this tail long enough. I think I kind of shortened it a little too much. Um, so you're gonna see me kind of choke up on my tapestry needle here. And once all of those stitches are done, then you are going to pull on that tail tightly and close that seam up. Here we go, pulling it nice and tight just like that, ooh, like magic. That part's pretty satisfying. Sometimes a little, uh, certain cotton yarns make it a little difficult, but that's why I like using cotton yarn because once it's set in stone there, it is good to go. So there we have it, nice and clean seam there, barely noticeable in my opinion. Go ahead and weave that end in, make sure it's not in your way. And I'm gonna speed up my weaving in here. And I kind of just kind of work it in in as many places as I can because I really don't want this to come apart. Um, I feel like with pieces that are functional decor like this, it is important to weave in your ends carefully. I think that over time they do come loose. If, and this piece, because it's made with cotton yarn, you can totally wash it if you ever need to, which I don't think you would, but yeah. So here we go. That first part is done. Step five here of attaching the main strip with the tabs is we're going to thread the tapestry needle again with one of the complementary color eight inch yarn tails from the tab. And we are going to go ahead and there's no secret way in how to do this. I mean, you're gonna see me do it in a variation of ways, but I really just use a couple of whip stitches um, in and through the border edge stitches of the main strip and then in and into the border edge stitches of the tab a couple times just like that. There's no like correct stitch to place that in. Obviously don't do it like seven stitches up or down from your uh, meeting up point here, but yeah, just like that, you're just gonna kinda go in and out, secure that, just make sure it's tacked down. Um, I tried to make this a science the first set of uh, organizers that I made and it was just unnecessary. I was just trying to do too much work. So just do what feels natural. And then once you have a couple whip stitches done, you're going to weave that tail into your work. 
And then you're just going to repeat that for the other side of this newly attached tab. Just make sure you tack down these sides pretty well, um, weaving it in as many times as you can muster and trim off any remaining yarn. And there you have it. This is a pretty simple part of the pattern. Um, pretty easy. If you find a better, better method to do this, just leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear. Um, I like seaming work. Um, I'm someone that likes to do puzzles for fun. I'm one of those crazy people. So um, seam work is kind of fun for me. It's, it's kind of like uh, putting puzzle pieces together in a way. Here we go, just seaming down the other side here with a couple of stitches. No big deal. I'm going to speed it up for you so it's not as uh, frustrating to watch. And yeah, um, also leave a comment down below. Um, have you made the Ever After ears? Have you, you know, how many have you made? Or do you, how many ears are in your ear collection? I would love to know. I actually really don't have any ears in my ear collection except for the ones that I've made, which is crazy. I used to have a couple pairs of ears um, back when I went to the parks more often, but honestly, it's been so long since I've been to the parks. It's been actually a couple of years since before the pandemic since I've been to the park. So I'm excited to go back soon. Um, I know this year they're celebrating a huge anniversary and there's so many fun new offerings. And um, as some of you know, I used to work in the entertainment department for Disney. So I love seeing old friends and I love seeing, you know, the changes that they have made in the parks and the decor and the new things and the ride. I know the Tron ride is new, so exciting. But anyway, let's get back to this pattern, shall we? Enough tangents for one day. So you've guessed it, I went ahead and I attached all of those other tabs to those um, same points as before. Um, and you can see, make sure that when you finish the t attaching all of them, they're all pointing in the same direction. That is very important. Um, we will then be attaching snap buttons onto these, um, but not quite yet. We want to take care of the rest of these, all these yarn tails that we've saved here. Um, so grab your dream catcher, I mean larger circle here. Uh, we're going to attach the bottom to the top here. This is um, a mildly fun part. I would say it's fun for me because I've made a couple of these before and now I know what I'm doing, but um, it can be a little heady. So pay close attention here. Once again, slow this down if you need to. Um, we're going to attach the main strip here to the bottom edge of our larger circle, which is marked off by those 26th, 27th, 31st, and 32nd stitches that we marked off here. Okay, I hope you're with me so far here. We are now attaching the bottom to the top. And we're going to do so with the top edge of the bottom and the bottom edge of the top, which I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So first things first, we want the wrong side of the larger circle facing us and the wrong side of the main strip facing us. But we're technically working with the top edge of the bottom and the bottom edge of the top. So those should kind of meet like that. I kind of lay it down on the table just to get my bearings. When I'm starting with this, you're grabbing the main color tail that is at the top of the bottom part here. And you're going to thread that with a tapestry needle, just like so. Then um, the stitches we're doing, sewing these two pieces together are going to be as followed. And this is why we marked off the posts of the row seven stitches of the larger circle. So my first sewing stitch is going to go left to right underneath the post with the wrong side of the larger circle facing you um, underneath that first marked off post on the left there. Your left, not the left when we originally marked the stitches, just like that. Alrighty, so go ahead and lightly pull that through. Again, we're not making tight sewing stitches and, and you're gonna see me remove this stitch marker and get it out of my way because this will confuse me later on <laughs> if I do not take it out now. Oh, this is a little difficult. Oh my God, I broke it. Oh no, okay, ignore that. Oh well, this is the sacrifice that that poor stitch marker just made. Oh my gosh, you're gonna see me fixing this. Sorry about that, folks. 
Hey, this is the name of the game. Sometimes crafting can be a dangerous thing, right? Okay, rip to that stitch marker. Here we go. So back to what I was saying here, I am inserting that first sewing stitch uh, by inserting my needle underneath the post of that first post on the left there, the marked off one. And then I am working that needle from down to up under that far left top stitch there, just like that. And I'm pulling down a little bit, but just to kind of like keep it from flopping all over the place here. So then I'm finding the next post to the right there, inserting my needle underneath it from left to right, pulling it through just like that. And then I am inserting my needle up, down to up through the next available stitch, just like that. Perfect. And then we're working like that all the way across for the next set of three matched stitches here. Take your time. Again, if you need to stop, rewind, slow it down. There is no shame. Um, it took me a minute to figure out this method. Um, I will say that if you are not, if you're doing like multiple colored yarns for these organizers, this will show up the most in color changes because since I'm doing the main color as the same all the way through the pattern, you're not gonna see it on the other side and you're gonna see me here removing the second stitch marker with much better ease than the other one, <laughs> thank God. Um, but yes, um, this join is so much stronger because I'm using the post of the stitch instead of if I was using just the back or like the, the tops of the stitches from that part of the pattern. It's just, it's just a stronger bond. And this is the most important bond, in my opinion. The sewing stitches done here will make this organizer much sturdier, last through the test of time. Um, I'm gonna take a second here as I'm weaving this end in here um, to also say why we're choosing cotton yarn for this pattern. You can totally make this with whatever yarn you wanna do. It is your creative journey. I will not run your life like that, however, as a designer and someone that has worked with multiple yarns, I did originally make this my first prototype, as you saw in my vlog that I posted beforehand. Um, I did work this up with acrylic yarn. It was a nice idea, but acrylic yarn tends to stretch and warp over time, especially with like temperatures and like sometimes the inside of people's houses is cooler, sometimes it's warmer. So the cotton yarn just creates so much of a stronger bond, less elasticity, it won't stretch over time. So here we go. All right, that's enough jabber jabber. Uh, let's work at attaching down these complementary color yarn tails here. Insert your needle into, or uh, insert the, <laughs> the tail into the tapestry needle here. And thankfully we've marked off the stitch that we already need to attach it to. Um, if you wanna do another different stitch, that's fine. This is just what makes sense to me because I'm matching up the same stuff with the same stuff. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this, like in how we attach the sides of the tabs down to the main strip. I am just attaching the side of the main strip to the closest bottom edge step stitch of the larger circle. And I'm just using a couple of whip stitches just to get me going. Um, I would do more stitches than less in this part because believe it or not, for some reason, this, uh, when I noticed working up another organizer, this was the part that like got pulled the most, like with the weight of the ears on the organizer. When I did a weak whip stitch, and I just did a couple, I didn't do three, and I didn't weave in the tails well enough, it ended up stretching out. And um, if you catch my stories or my live when I introduced this pattern on Instagram, because I will be going live and being like, hey guys, here's my new pattern. Um, I do kind of like show you all of my pieces that I worked on before I got to the final answer and the final pattern. <laughs> um, it, it, I went through a lot of, ups and downs with this and in good ways like I don't consider any downs to be a true down I consider them to just be an opportunity for the pattern to be the best that it can be and it and it definitely is the best that it can be 
So I'm just weaving this in, um, no right or wrong way to do this, but please weave your ends in as you go. You will, your future self will thank you. You are gonna see me not this, which I didn't do when I wove in other ends, but I do here because once again, like I said, this is the part that kind of pulls the most and kind of stretches a little bit more in comparison to the rest of the pattern when you add the weight of the ears. Just attaching the other last tail here um, to the bottom edge of our larger circle and going into that same place that we marked off right here that is the 26th stitch of the larger round just using a couple of wood stitches to attach the border edge of the main strip to the larger circle and then as much as you can muster weave in that end to your piece in as many places that you can possibly um, handle <laughs> and there we have it that is attaching the bottom of the organizer to the top of the organizer and i hope these instructions have made sense i tend to be wordy um, but i'd rather say more than you know assume that everybody knows what I'm talking about if you need further clarification um, I am totally an open book I am NOT closed for business once a pattern is released so please please message me I am more than happy to answer your questions and another place for you to ask your questions is in my ever after club on Facebook um, if I haven't mentioned it before, I do have a Facebook, Facebook group, and that is where we share our makes um, from the Woven Tales of Science patterns, and we share Disney love and all kinds of fun stuff. So check that out. I will leave a link to that in the description box below. So up until now, we have been working in, uh, we've been working up in difficulty level with the seaming work and the sewing work of this last chapter here. So this is probably the most uh, tedious, I would say, of this pattern, but trust me, if you follow how I show it here, it will stay and it will stay nicely. Um, when these ears, um, and I keep calling them ears because it's technically the ear portion of the mouse ear motif, but when these smaller seam circles are attached to the larger circle in the stitches that we have marked off, um, when this lays flat on the wall, all seam together, it does stay, but the ears are not completely erect. I have yet to find a way that makes them stand up pin straight and not moving but thankfully when it's laid on a wall there's nothing else touching that part of the piece so you don't have to worry about it flopping over it won't but it isn't like stick straight like the ever after ears ears are on the headband it is slightly uh, less sturdy because we're not using glue we are just sewing here so here we go I am taking one ear at a time attaching it to the top of the larger circle here and I am threading the main color yarn of the right side of my smaller circle into my tapestry needle you're going to see me here kind of line up the unworked stitches of round five of our front piece of our smaller circle here with the 
tops of the stitches of the, the marked off stitches that we had here. So we are going to start by inserting our needle going up to down through the front loop of the sixth stitch of round eight and then up through the third loop of that first unworked stitch of the front smaller circle, just like that. You can tighten it down or you can leave it loose stitches for now and then tighten later, it's up to you. Continue working down through the front loop, and that is very important, the front loop of that next stitch and then up through the third loop of the next stitch on the smaller circle of the front piece. And then once again, down through the front loop of the next stitch, that should be the eighth stitch, and then up through the third loop of the next stitch in the smaller circle. Keep repeating that until all of the unworked stitches are used up from the smaller front circle. And then you're going to pull your tail tightly and you are going to go ahead and weave that end into your work. And that's it for this part. Um, once that's woven in, you're going to repeat that same process. And you're gonna see me here tighten that up, make sure it's nice and secure. There we go, not too tight. You're gonna actually warp it if you do it way too tight. Um, and then you're just gonna see me weave this in. You're doing the same exact step, just going from left to right instead of right to left on the back side of the other smaller circle. And the, using the back loops of the larger circles, stitches that we had marked off here. The stitches that are marked off, the fifth and the 11th stitches, those will be used for connecting the complementary color yarn tails from the smaller circles. Okay, flipping my work over here, now I have access to the wrong side of my work and the back side of those smaller circle and we are going to thread that main color tail with our tapestry needle and just like we did on the other side now we're working left to right we're going to find the sixth stitch first go down through the back loop of that sixth stitch and then up through the third loop of the matched half double crochet which is a little hard to find for some reason on this side. There we go, right there. Up through that. Then down through the back loop of the next larger circle stitch, which will be our seventh stitch from that round. And then up through the next available third stitch to the right. There we go. And you're going to repeat that all the way across until you have no more unworked stitches from the smaller circle and you will not be working into the place that is marked off by the stitch marker because that will be for the complementary color yarn. And then once you're all done with those sewing stitches like from before, you are going to pull that tail tightly to close our seam up. This kind of reminds me of uh, watching like embroidery fixes <laughs> on TikTok and reels on Instagram. I love sewing tricks, they make me so happy. All right, pulling that nice and tightly, not too tightly to warp the piece. And we are then weaving this end into our work, just like so, no science to it. You don't have to be as nitpicky about this one, not like in the main strip connection. <laughs> Um, and then once that is done, go ahead and repeat those same exact methods with the front and back side of the smaller seamed circle, attaching it to the other sets of marked stitches from the larger circle, which would be the 47th and 53rd stitches that were marked off. And then once you have that complete, meet me back here and we will go ahead and do the last sewing stitches for um, attaching the smaller circles here.
All right, so as you can see, I have both smaller circles 90% attached here. Pretty strong bond there. Go ahead and thread your tapestry needle with one of the complementary colors. Uh, tails and just like we did with the main strip um, sides we're doing the same thing up here with the sides of our smaller seam circles and the larger circle as well you're just using a couple of whip stitches going into that indicated stitch that we had marked off first and then just working a couple of whip stitches from there this isn't like a super super intense sewing part so just a couple of whip stitches will do and then make sure that you weave your end in to the back side or the wrong side of your work whether that is woven into the uh, last round of the larger circle or the last round of the smaller circle perfect and you're going to do that for every single tail that you see left here. Once you have that complete, I will see you for the last step of this pattern. Can you believe it? You already made it. Oh my gosh, you hung in there with me. I'm so proud. You are a maker of valor and you are a scholar. Well done, well done. All those circles are seamed it looks very beautiful well done so here we have um, we are going to now attach the snap buttons that I have mentioned in the list of materials to the main strip now the placement of these snap buttons um, this could be dealer's choice as well if you so choose to uh, alter this part of the pattern it won't really uh, you know alter it too much um, I know everyone has a different preference, but I will be attaching the snap buttons, at least one half of the snap buttons, to the 11th row up from the seam of the tab, of each tab. Uh, 
um, you're gonna see me counting my rows here this is about an estimate and I don't do this in the pattern but this is once again an extra bonus trick tip you're gonna see in this video tutorial here on YouTube for my YouTube audience I am marking off the third stitch of the 11th row up from the seam and I'm marking it with a stitch marker and I am doing that because I don't know it just feels like it makes it faster for me to see what I'm doing next by just having those stitches ready to go and marked and that's exactly where I'm going to put it and it will be consistent across the board. Um, especially if you're working up an organizer that has more than three tabs, it is nice to have a consistent look all the way down your organizer main strip. Um, so you're going to see that's the scene there. I count up 11 rows, give or take. 12 or 13 will not kill the look of this pattern, I promise you. And I'm just finding that middle stitch, the third stitch from that row, and I am just kind of setting that in there and letting that be known to my future self that that is where we are attaching our snap button. Um, doing it again for this last one, counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Finding that stitch marking it off. I don't have this written up in the pattern, so don't come for me if you've bought the pattern. This is just an extra thing that I've done and I do think it does help. Alrighty, cool. So once you have that done, go ahead and separate your halves of your snap buttons. Golly, this is difficult if you don't have very long nails. <laughs> um, and make sure you remember that there's a receiving part and a giving part of these snap buttons and do not match receiving with receiving and giving with giving because they will not close and you will have to re-sew them on as I have done in the past. I am speaking from experience. All right, and once all those are pulled apart and you have them separated and you will not mix them up, um, we are all we're simply doing is attaching one half to where we marked off and then the other half to the inside of the end of the tab, right where the color changes meet, where the complementary color border bottom edge is meeting the main color tab edge, if that makes sense. You'll see in a bit. sewing trip I pull the knotted thread all the way through except the very end and then I kind of insert my needle through the center of that end and it kind of locks it in place so I don't have any weird tails sticking out so they're a little kerfuffly to start if I had it my way I'd actually probably use bigger snaps than this I was really just using snaps that I had on hand um, but you know dealer's choice pick what you have don't buy it if you don't need it. Um, if you want to use a Velcro for this part too, that could totally work. I just think that Velcro can be a bit tricky if you're putting these pretty mouse ears on display. You don't want to accidentally close a tab over a set of mouse ears and then have that Velcro rough up the fabric, whether it be crocheted or regular fabric of the mouse ears that would just be devastating so that's why i chose snap buttons i also think magnets would work for this too if you want to glue magnets on instead of sewing these on i just figured well you know what i'm already sewing in this piece why not sew on some snap buttons um, another option could be you could probably just add buttons regular buttons and then make um, a chain loop at the end of the bottom in the middle of the bottom edge of each tab that could also work you could do kind of like a hook and eye situation with buttons um, and if not, just stick to the snap buttons. They're just as good. 
Um, I'm gonna speed through this little section. I'm gonna catch you at the end and show you what it all looks like. Yay! Here we have it, the end of the pattern. Well done. Thanks for coming in and watching this video. I hope you have found this helpful if you bought the pattern. And if you're just watching it to know how to make it, thank you for joining in. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be done with this voiceover so we can see my face again, because I'm sure you're tired of my voice by itself. All right, folks, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Please pause the video, rewind it, play it back in a different speed. If there are any parts of it that were confusing to you, please leave a comment down below with any questions on the pattern. This pattern is available in all of my pattern shops on Ravelry, on Etsy. If this is something that you would like a full formal version of, please check out my pattern shops. I've linked those down below. All of my materials that I've used in the video are also linked down below. If you're looking also to make this, but you don't want to make it with the mouse ear motif at the top, I am working on a non-mouse ear subtle version of the mouse ear holder. So stay tuned for that. On that note, I hope you have a creative day, adding magic to your stitches in your own way, and I will see you in the next video. <sighs> Goodbye. Other things, everything, all the information is in a little bit of spice.